James Gunn has made some announcements, Brian. Perhaps they weren't what we were expecting to see, but they were announcements nonetheless. Some insight as to, as to some inspirations mm -hmm. for the movies and for the shows that he's doing that he's very excited about, Brian, Creature Commandos, Brian. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about Crypto the Dog and its inclusion in the Superman movie. Peacemaker, uh, he says some good things about um, how that process is going. It basically is what he's doing and where things are going and when they're coming out or whatever, right, Brian? Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on which one do you want to tackle first? Let's do Superman stuff first, I think. Let's do Superman first. That's still the flagship project. So we have really have two main two main updates here. So number one was a social media update where he puts a picture up of D uh, David Corn Sweat in costume with his back to you and there's Crypto the dog next to him and they're watching the world go by. And the internet had thoughts <laughs> on Crypto <laughs> because Crypto- <laughs> I had thoughts. Crypto is based, so Crypto is, he clearly admits he used his own dog, a smaller breed dog, as the basis for the crypto he's putting on screen. To which most people said, wait, isn't crypto generally a retriever in the comics? And as we saw, like in Super Pets, to which James Gunn responded, he's alien. And therefore, his appearance should kind of be all over the place and not be reflected by one human breed dog. This has become the latest sort of controversy, if you will, in, in, in Superman is the look of Crypto, who presumably, as we know, is in Supergirl as well. So I'm assuming same, it'll be the same dog. Yeah, yeah. Did you care? I looked at it, Brian, as a distraction. That he was there at all or that how it looked? That he was there at all. Yeah. Why? That means that throughout this film, or at some point at this film, he is going to be around distracting, causing Mr. Terrific to go chase this dude around. Mr. Terrific, the smartest dude on earth, got to go get this dog, got to figure out how to get this dog, right? That's what we're doing. This is going to be 15, 20 minutes of Crypto the Dog just running around. There he save Superman. Superman needs saving. Superman <laughs> needs a hand. Unless there's kryptonite around, I get that. You throw a piece of dust at, 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 at and you you you've debilitated him. Go fetch the kryptonite. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's how I'm looking at this, Brian. I'm looking at the story and how and where am I going to be spending my time when I'm watching this? That's how I'm looking at it, Brian. Well, it is a very James Gunn thing, though. I think this is was I think this we knew crypto was coming, and I think it's unavoidable um, that we were going to get this aspect of Superman because I think James Gunn has that lighter, heartwarming side, and he's trying to portray that in this you know, Superman. And so I think it's inevitable. I think to your point, clearly the key is how much does crypto have to, or get to do in this movie before we, you know, start asking questions. Um, but you know, on the flip side, it, it's comics accurate. I mean, he is part of Superman's life. And so I think that's part of what James would argue is that like, I'm trying to bring this, you know, classic Superman to life and classic Superman includes having Superman's best friend. Um, and so, yeah, but I think you're right. I mean, I think it's, if we have a, if we have a whole set piece built around crypto, then I would expect James Gunn would be getting a call from Ryan Reynolds saying, yo, crypto versus dog pool crossover. And that better not happen. Yeah. But, you know, if he's here and there and you kind of see him and it's more like, where's Waldo, then I think it's fine. I, I need just... to slap about the breed. Whatever. I mean, Okay. I mean, I get it. It doesn't have right. to. We, 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 yeah. Let's not go crazy in terms of accuracy, right? Um, For that. Like, see, see, here's an example where I was like, yeah, he's always drawn as a retriever. I love retrievers. There's a picture of my old golden retriever right behind me. Like, I'm not, like, hung up on crypto's weight or size or fur. 
as a determinant for for this movie for me. Imagine he would have been a pit bull. I would have been like, oh snap, crypto the pit bull. Forget about it. <laughs> you know, but the fact that he's going to be there at all is a distraction. I mean, he's supposed to show up in uh, Supergirl, right? He made an announcement he's about that. Have a bigger part in that. He's supposed to have a bigger part in that. Oh yeah. right. Why not? And mid credit scene, end credit scene. I don't know. Do that as a vehicle for that, so that we can be like, okay, what happens next? Yeah, we got to see him, and and we trying to connect with the Superman that you're giving us, Brian. Well, that's why I draw the dog pool analogy, right? Because if you go back to that movie, how many slow mo shots does do they give dog pool? Like four? It's a lot, right? Like the first one, you kind of like, oh, that's cute and funny. By the third or fourth one, you're like. Really? Again? Like, you know, so that's where we ask the question, how much crypto? Here is where I think it works. I've never owned a dog, but I'm sure people who own dogs, like talking, just speaking out loud, their thoughts with their dog, you know, what they're thinking. And that'll be a moment for Superman to speak to the audience about what he's thinking about how whatever situation and his dog is the only person that's with him. And he's talking to him about it, and we're listening in pretty much. That's the only reason that it works for me. I just don't want to spend time chasing this dude. And having the smartest man in the world going after him. You know, that's my take on it. I think odds are relatively low. That would be my guess. My guess is he's my guess is he's in it in shots like this, which are sort of like panoramics they're sort of moments you know they're not really like full-on scenes i would be but shocked does that aspect work then when i just laid out yeah like i think so the mind the mind of kal-el yeah and this idea that like this is a conversation they've had for years because they've spent that time together sure of course so that was the like visual one but we finally got james gunn talking about the movie which is funny if you think about it for all the time he spends on socials he usually kind of gives you like a one word answer one sentence answer. So finally, at New York Comic Con, he talked about the film itself. And of course, he's in hype mode. The quote The movie is going extraordinarily well. We're deep in the process of editing. David Corn Sweat is going to blow the people, blow people the F away. He is the movie star that everyone dreams he could possibly be. And I don't think anyone understands the depth of this guy's talent dramatically and comedically. He's the best physical action star I've probably ever worked. He's an amazing actor. And Rachel Brosnahan, people are going to die for her as Lois, end quote. Brian, he's speaking what we've spoken when these announcements came to light. Doesn't surprise me. It actually excites me somewhat but i expect him to say what he's saying sure so but when these announcements this the excitement that we had when those announcements were made brian we've had them already i just want to see something so to that point he said quote there's no trailer yet it won't be too long but it won't be soon quote so cryptic on that so i guess you could say by christmas i don't know that's what he's sort of saying maybe maybe i don't think it would be I interpret that to be like you wouldn't like Super Bowl would be too far out. So probably saying Halloween is too soon. So I would say probably somewhere around Christmas. I, 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 I don't know what they're. I couldn't think of an obvious flagship property for him to attach it to. But so we'll see what they do. But that seems to be what he's saying to your point about seeing. It. And yes, you would expect him to be a hype man for his cast for sure. But it's the first time he said anything about. Yeah, it, so. yeah. And I, and I expect whatever he's feeling, I expect to see that on screen. Any other announcements for Superman? Oh, he did also say um, Supergirl uh -huh. is filming by the end of October in England. Starts to film Correct. by the end of October. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Brian, I keep thinking about that show we did months ago because that is the topic that we have to sort of touch on brian when it comes to what sort of success are you looking for because based on the hit based on history that no matter what name you throw out up on the screen there it doesn't reflect in terms of the success you want mm -hmm. therefore we get no sequels franchises none of that we're talking about female-led superhero yes. and action 
franchise yes. type films, it has been challenging yes. at the box office in general. Yes, but certainly, Brian, you and I are excited, and some and and Tracy, all these dudes are excited about seeing this movie. Why? For me, a little bit, ha it has to do with the the atrocity <laughs> that was the first one, right? So we saw sort of visually what that would, what that looks like, Supergirl, and how it didn't hit the same. But based on the storyline and 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 the, I guess the praise that that storyline has gotten and the people behind it, Brian, again, the team surrounding this project makes this project for those people waiting for something like this very excited to see. Yeah. I mean, there's reasons for optimism, and obviously everyone that makes one of these now is going to be holding up Patty Jenkins' Wonder Woman from a financial perspective as the what is possible, $800 yes. million dollars out, of the, out of the gate, um, albeit, as we said, in sort of peak superhero fanfare time. Um, but yeah, look, I mean, I think, I think Millie Alcock's ratings, to the extent that people know her, is very high from, from House of the Dragon. I think the storyline of Woman of Tomorrow offers interesting potential because it is not a hokey, goofy, you know, type of Supergirl story. It has a chance to be more raw, yeah. has a chance to offer the character more range to be morally questionable on route to redemption, um, sort of a good buddy type movie stuff. So we'll see. I mean, it has potential, but as we've discussed, there's just, there are a lot of precedents for even when stuff is well-received, as recent example, Furiosa, critically well-received, audiences oftentimes do not come out the same way for these types of projects as they do yeah. for others. We're certainly looking forward to, to seeing this movie, whether it's a success for DC. I mean, let's see. Let's see. I would hope so. I, would I hope think so. a significant portion of its potential rides on Superman. Yes, everything. Right. Else. Right. After. We know that. But I'm yeah. saying this in particular, it's yeah. sort of like yeah, yeah, if yeah, Superman yeah. is dead on arrival, then they might as well send this one straight to Max. <laughs> like, I'm serious. Might as well back girl it. Like, it's just oh. not going to work. It's just not, I'm just saying, like, it's not going to work. Like, if Superman is bad or people just don't care and nobody shows up, yeah. they're not, not suddenly going to be like, aha, I'm showing up for this. One last thing before we move on. Um, are there any other announcements um, that you want to talk about? Um, after uh, I mean, this? they showed a Creature Commandos trailer. We can talk, I, we can talk about that. Yeah. Um, but we, before we move on to that, one thing, Brian, why Supergirl works and Batgirl really doesn't really work. Supergirl's Kryptonian and she got power. Batgirl doesn't. And we, it just is, it's just, remember again, if you go back to that show, Brian, we talk about believability that she's capable of doing some of the things that she's capable of doing. With Supergirl, it's believable. Why? Because she's Kryptonian. Yeah. And I think that makes a difference, Brian. It does. I mean, you saw like Sasha Kaye in The Flash. I mean, some of those scenes are some of the better scenes in the movie. Exactly. Exactly. People talking about this, why she's not Supergirl or whatever. People were talking about that, but she died in the movie. So, <laughs> you know, what are we talking about here? So those possibilities make it possible for success to come to these, uh, to these movies. Although the, it, that doesn't necessarily say that women have to have powers in order for something to be successful. Because I have ideas, Brian, that I think if I were, were, were able to pitch someone, I think it could work. 